Our meeting today is an opportunity to deepen our collaboration in another important field, namely energy. Portugal is one of the countries in Europe that has been pioneering the deploying, deployment of renewable energy. As we confront our own energy challenges, we are keen to discuss best practice, draw a number of good lessons from how you have gone about becoming energy secure, how we can learn from the technology that you have utilized and have technology transfer, and also investment potential in our energy sector. The ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has had a global impact. As South Africa, we believe that negotiation and dialogue can indeed play an important role in resolving conflicts. We know this from our own experience in relation to our transition to democracy. We continue to advocate the, for rules-based multilateralism that should be at the center of global efforts to address common challenges. It has always been our view that peace and security create more space and favorable conditions for development and advancing mutual prosperity for the peoples of the world. It is very meaningful for us to have a cooperation both bilateral and multilateral that has been deepening its roots in the last decades. As you stressed, this is the first visit of a Portuguese president to South Africa in the last 29 years. And uh, it's a unique opportunity for such a cooperation. Multilateral, as you mentioned, in the United Nations, in other international organizations, fighting for multilateralism at a time where it is very difficult to meet uh, this aim. But also for peace, for freedom, for human rights, for international law, and addressing so many issues. You mentioned one of them, and I would like to, to thank your role in this African Peace Initiative concerning Ukraine, involving other heads of state, African heads of state, but knowing how important is your specific role, trying to meet conditions for a future that would really respect international law, the Charter of the United Nations, and at the same time listen to the two parties and telling them what is the African view of a war that is not just an European war. It is a global war involving directly or indirectly powers of the world. So it was a day of formalities, a 21-gun salute, a brass band, guard of honor, the full works reception, as is befitting of a head of state at the Union Buildings, as President Sol Ramaphosa hosts his counterpart, Portuguese President Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa. And Kylie Lakumalo was there. Kai, it's been a very long day for you. Up at 2 a.m., still looking as fresh as ever. Um, <laughs> and what are, of course, evergreen are these relationships between Portugal and South Africa? We can't get through all of the big details, but the big ticket items, let's kick it off with the war on Ukraine. Um, and, 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 and both leaders agreeing that they would both engage Zelensky and, and Putin on, on areas of potential cooperation. Well, absolutely, Iman, especially because we know that when it comes to the African continent, you do have this peace mission that wants to go to Russia and, of course, Ukraine to engage with the two leaders. In fact, 
President Ramaphosa said, as they'll be meeting with the two leaders, what is going to be important is to try and set the issue of the preconditions so that there are negotiations, so that they try and find a long lasting uh, solution in this regard, because this war is really having implications that are far reaching in so many aspects, the food prices, the inflation and the food insecurity, especially in the very vulnerable region like mm -hmm. sub-Saharan Africa. But something that is quite interesting as well, Iman, when it comes to, uh, you know, the issue of security will be, uh, you know, the defense agreement that uh, the two countries signed today. You know that South Africa and Portugal do play a very pivotal role when it comes to repelling the terror attacks in Mozambique, of course, with a history of uh, the colonial power of Portugal in Mozambique. So lot of investment happening there. So uh, there was that particular agreement that was signed. Were there any overtures, uh, seeing as the International Relations Minister, Dr. Naledi Panda, was there about South Africa's uh, stance of neutrality against, you, uh, against Russia? You know, when I spoke to Minister Panda, really, she said to me, South Africa is trying by all means to explain to its major trading partners where it stands in as far as this war is concerned. So she says, really, it's not about trying to do like a favor to these guys, so to speak, but it's about making sure that they understand South Africa's foreign policy, where it's predicated from. But apart from that, we do understand that Minister Panda will be heading to Ukraine from next week. Of course, they're still working out the modalities and uh, South Africa's ambassador in Ukraine, Kronewald, is going to be a very instrumental person in terms of making sure that they work out the logistics because they will be using a train from Poland all the way to the Ukrainian capital. Renewables, uh, well, energy and renewables in particular, uh, one of the big points that uh, w was in President Ramaphosa's speech. What was said in terms of cooperation on this matter? So the Portuguese have done exceptionally well in terms of making sure that they achieve energy security. That was a point that was emphasized by President Ramaphosa. So saying they're willing to learn from the Portuguese experience in terms of the renewables. And we do know that in South Africa, the issue of the just energy transition mm. is quite a hot potato but you know so many western countries are working with south africa to make sure that we decarbonize our economy by using the most reliable energy so that we do away with the rolling blackout a quick one on trade relations between our two countries and it would seem that they it's it's skewed in in, in portugal's favor uh, right now a any talk on how to equalize or make it a more equitable trading partnership so President Marcelo really emphasized this issue once again, saying that it's quite important to address that issue. But for them, this is quite also a very big event because he was supposed to come to South Africa in 2020. But in light of COVID-19, they had to put everything on hold. So they have like this particular custom where they choose a certain country where you do have a sizable population, people of Portuguese that descend to celebrate the day of Portugal, Portugal, a bigger part. And so South Africa, it's South Africa's turn this time around. Wonderful. Great wrap. I hope you're off to get some rest. Uh, Kylie <laughs> Fle, Kumala, uh, SABC News reporter who was there at the union buildings to observe this state visit.